Hey guys, and welcome back to part two of this little FTE mini series I'm doing here. If you were here for the first episode, you'll remember that uh, we had a pretty big mess here to clean up with a couple holes in an FTE block. I thought that it was um, a bearing that gave way and it still could have been, but um, some of you reckon it uh, was actually a conrod that snapped. And upon further inspection of the crank, you could well be right because there's not a lot of wear on that crank journal. Um, so it could have been just 650,000 Ks of wear and a bit much power towards the end of its life. And yes, that's right, 650,000 Ks. I had to go and check again. I thought it was 6.30 last episode, but no, it's done 40,000 since we did all the work to it to make it go crazy fast. Um, but anyway, so in this episode today, I want to show you, I want to introduce this engine over here uh, that I have been working on. I want to show you how I picked it up and uh, we're going to get it ready in this episode for paint. So I want to strip it down to its ba like bare minimum kind of thing and clean it up, prime it, paint it, and then it'll be ready to start uh, further inspection and putting it back together. So normally I do a little bit of a time lapse for something like this, but um, considering this was my first real uh, engine dismantling, I decided to do a little collation of, of how carefully I took everything apart <laughs> because I was uh, a little bit nervous about it, but um, definitely gained some confidence along the way. So this is how I picked up the FTE um, for about four grand from one of the local wreckers, which I think was a pretty good deal, but of course it came with no turbo manifolds or fuel system and it was missing some other things as well. So I did have to spend a lot of money on this um, if I wanted to go ahead and put it in my car. But considering that dad's engine blew up, uh, I could just take all the parts off his, put it on this and put it back in his car. Okay, for the video and for my reference when putting this back together, we've taken short screws out of all of these and then we've got a long screw here. And we've also got, put it back in. We've also got long screws. One, two, three, four, yeah, five. So they kind of go along that line down there. Okay, so I've just gone and taken these short screws out of that middle one there, and that one back there. And then we've got a long screw here, another short one there. So that one there is a long screw. And that is pretty much all of them, I think. So once I had the engine all dismantled, everything off that I needed off to clean it up and paint, it was time to get into the real tedious work. Um, so we're looking at using wire brush wheels, brake cleaner, degreaser, and an air nozzle for the next couple of days. Um, yeah, that's all it was. It was pretty much just those three things on repeat. Uh, the aim is to get all of the dirt, oil, and uh, moisture out of the block. And because it's quite a porous material, this cast iron, uh, it does take a lot of work. And that's where the brake cleaner and degreaser comes in handy, especially brake cleaner because it actually evaporates. So it gets into those pores and evaporates out the oil and coolant and whatever else is in there. So um, yeah, just tape up the stuff that you don't want to get all of that muck in. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much just repeat those three things. Uh, brake cleaner, air nozzle, wire brush brake cleaner, air nozzle, wire brush. So 
So when I was confident that the block was clean and dry, uh, it was time to start taping some stuff up. So this here is a trick that my mate actually taught me um, over Melbourne way. And it's basically you just put the masking tape on, doesn't matter if it overlaps a bit. And then you run a screwdriver along that sharp edge and it just tears it enough that you can just peel it away and it molds perfectly to what you want to tape off. Um, and I use this for uh, this coolant passage here, intake manifold, exhaust manifold, the front of the um, engine around the camshaft area. It was just amazing. It was a great, great little tactic and a huge time saver. So uh, yeah, obviously tape everything up that you do not want paint on. So the one last thing I want to do before painting this engine is give it a good wipe over with the thinners that I'll be using. Um, and this just really makes sure that there's no dirt or oil or grease left on, any like even handprints and stuff like that. Um, it's just being over pedantic about making sure that paint is going to stick. Undercoat's normally pretty sticky anyway, but this is just a really good safety measure. So I'll be using this pretty basic edge primer. Uh, devastatingly enough, I actually forgot to hit record on the camera for the first pass of undercoat, uh, but you do get the idea. So I think I did three undercoats uh, and then maybe two or three top coats. So I really wanted to get maximum coverage on that porous cast iron with this etch primer. And then yeah, did the same with the two pack. So for a top coat, I will be using uh, what I thought was a Caterpillar Yellow um, or hoped might be a Caterpillar Yellow, but it is pretty bright, but we're just going to roll with it. Uh, I have this four to one hardener to put with it, and then I'm going to use about 15% uh, of the mix thinners. As with any paint mix, before you put it through the gun, you want it to be a bit of a milky consistency, and I think that's what we've got here. I started out pretty light, but don't be afraid to go a little bit heavier with two pack and when you're painting an engine block. Even if there are some runs, it's not something you'll really notice at all on an engine block. Obviously you don't want runs, but don't be afraid to go pretty heavy for the first couple of coats. Like two heavy coats, two or three heavy coats is better than a heap of small thin coats with painting an engine block. So there you go guys, made heaps of progress today. Uh, tune back in next week for when we get into some big end bearings. We'll change the head gasket uh, and do some big jobs like that. So exciting stuff, see you then.